Today I thought I would try to explain exposure compensation because our digital cameras, whether you have a DSLR or a point and shoot, it doesn't matter. They all have light meters in them and almost all cameras read scenes wrong. If you have a lot of dark in a scene, your camera is going to read that wrong and if you have a lot of light in the scene, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to read it wrong. You're going to have to, that's why it's there. That's why they have exposure compensation. So we, as photographers, can see the scene and adjust our cameras because even the best metering systems can't get it right every time. They do a good job, but they can't get it right every time. So let's take a look. I set up a little, a couple of little scenes here and I'll try to show you how it works. So let's say you are going to take a picture of a dark object, like this group of objects. All these objects here are black in color. So what do we need to do to get this to look right? This is going to throw our camera meter off. Well, I'll show you. You underexpose if it's dark and overexpose if it's light. So let's take a look at the digital SLR here. Here's our group of dark objects that we're going to photograph. So if you look at their light meter down towards the bottom of the frame right here, that is the what the camera is saying is the correct exposure. But these cameras can't think as much as a human being can. So let's take a look and see what happens here at the correct exposure that the camera thinks. This is what most people are going to get. Take a shot and if I just change that, that is gray. The objects look gray. Uh, if I look at it with my eyes, um, it's that's nothing what the objects look like. So what we need to do is underexpose. So if you look at your light meter there, I'm moving my exposure wheel. There's underexposed by one stop. Let's try uh, two thirds of a stop. Take a shot. Now that's getting closer to what my eye is seeing. Um, so I'm going to go, let's try uh, one and a third stops. Now that's almost exactly what my eye is seeing. Um, so you can see there that there's quite a big difference and I'll show you because the uh, video camera is actually uh, trying to compensate for it. Now let's say you were trying to shoot a picture of a white object. Now this is the uh, nearest white object I could find. It's an umbrella. But anything white, snow, any, any white scene. Now let's take a look at uh, exactly the same thing as the dark object but in reverse. Now let's take a look at that on the uh, digital SLR here. And here we are with our light object. Could be a wedding dress, could be snow, anything light in the light end of the spectrum. So you can see our, our light meter down here on the bottom is saying that's the correct exposure. So I've pre-focused and I'll take a shot. Now that actually looks gray, looks like gray. So what we need to do is take our exposure up as you can see there. The meter is moving. I am now, well, we'll try it the same way. We'll try it two thirds of a stop overexposed, like we did underexposed for the dark subject. So there we are, two thirds of a stop overexposed. Take a shot. And that's starting to look a little more like what my eye sees. Now we'll try say one and a third stop uh, overexposed take a shot 
and that is pretty close to exactly what my eye sees uh, real time. So that can be used either way for dark or light subjects. I hope you sort of understand it a little bit better now. Um, you know, like I say, it's something that really took me a long time to understand. And now that I do, it's making my photography better. So, you know, I'm just learning every day and trying to pass it on a little bit. And hopefully it'll help you out. So, have a great day. See you later.